The White House driveway was swarming with extra police and an added detail of Secret Service men, with news and radio reporters and state, war, and Navy officials. Hopkins, Knox, and Stimson already were with the boss in his second-floor study. Hull and General Marshall arrived a few minutes later. Most of the news on the Jap attack was then coming to the White House by telephone from Admiral Stark, Chief of Naval Operations at the Navy Department. It was my job to take these fragmentary and shocking reports from him by shorthand, type them up, and relay them to the boss. I started taking the calls on a telephone in the second floor hall, but the noise and confusion were such that I moved into the president's bedroom. The news continued to come in, each report more terrible than the last, and I could hear the shocked unbelief in Admiral Stark's voice as he talked to me. At first, the men around the president were incredulous, that changed to angry acceptance as new messages supported and amplified the previous ones. The boss maintained greater outward calm than anybody, but there was rage in his very calmness. With each new message, he shook his head grimly and tightened the expression of his mouth. Within the first hour, it was evident that the Navy was dangerously crippled. It was easy to speculate that a Jap invasion force might be following their airstrike at Hawaii, or that the West Coast itself might be marked for similar assault. 